Good morning, this is Dylan Giovanni with Behind the Markets. Happy Monday. We were talking about 9-11 last week, September 11th, but there's something else that happened in 2001 that has actually had a bigger effect on the United States and the world by far, by a factor of 10, than what Osama bin Laden did on 9-11 and our subsequent v invasion of Afghanistan and Iraq. Something bigger, much, much bigger. And the other thing that happened in 2001 also happened on the 11th day of a specific month. You wanna take a guess at what that is? Well, I'm gonna tell you. On December 11th, 2001, two months, through, well, actually, September, October, November, December, a few months after 9-11, China, was allowed into the World Trade Organization. Now, this has had a bigger effect on the world and the United States than anything Osama bin Laden could have dreamed of. Way bigger effect. So basically, the elites in both parties, because Bill Clinton shepherded them through the WTO, George W. Bush had them sign the final deal. The elites actually believed that if you make this giant rich, if we open our capital markets to them, if we show them the playbook, they, they would become our little benign buddies. They'd become our little friends. And even more offensive, they actually thought, the elites of this country, that China would become democratic, which shows me a, a couple of things. First of all, a shocking lack of humility before God that you actually think you understand another country. China's not even a country. It's more like a civilization where you think they're going to become democratic, where nothing in their history suggests Countries that are invaded and have lots of enemies all around them tend not to become democratic. They actually tend to become autocratic. The population of those countries tends to select strongmen. Think Russia. Think of countries that have had that, Poland, etc. Anyway, to have the arrogance to think that China would become democratic. I mean, there's some of the top minds of this country at the time were actually saying China will become, they'll get rich, then they'll become democratic. The second thing they thought is they would follow international rules. Look, the neighborhood I grew up in, Queens, New York, in the 70s, well, it was all about the playground, right? When a big, new, strong kid came into the neighborhood, you had to kind of settle the pecking order immediately. These guys were so out of touch with the way real people act, the way real power is distributed, that they actually thought that this big giant would just take the second or third pecking order in the playground. They, these guys were so out of touch, it, it just shocks the mind. And I say this, and I bring this up because this week it was announced that Volkswagen is gonna actually do something that it's never done before in the history of Germany. I was surprised to find this. I read this in the New York Times this morning. They're gonna actually announce layoffs for the first time because of all the Chinese exports that are flooding the German market. Now, Germany is in a very, very tough position here because they sell a lot to China, so they don't want to slap tariffs on China too much because if they slap tariffs on China too much, uh, China is just going to slap tariffs back at them. And that's one of the right things that our elites in this country have done is they haven't made us that dependent uh, on exports to China, which reduces their leverage with us. So there was somebody in our, uh, on, in our government at the time that must have had some kind of a brain who must have foresaw that this was a possibility that not only would we strengthen and enrich China and lift them up out of poverty, which is great, but we would actually create a Frankenstein monster of our biggest competitor who now is like breaking free and wants to do what it wants to do. I am not, I repeat, I am not anti-Chinese. That's just simplistic and stupid. That is beneath the quest for truth that we find ourselves on at this stage of our life. I am pro-American, pro-defending this country. This is where I am coming from, not anti-anybody. I believe in live and let live and have everybody do what you do, what is in your best interest. I am just talking about what is in our best interest. Anyway, I know this is a rant. I kind of wanted to riff about 
this Monday morning. I didn't really want to tie these two together on 9-11 because that would disrespect the honor and the memory of the friends and the people that I know that were lost that day. So I don't want anything else to tar that. But I wanted to talk about this today. Also, I would like to close on a personal note. I just wanted to wish Harold and Mona a happy anniversary. I mean, they their anniversary was last week. 52 years. And they are members of ours, but 52 years. And I, 52 years, marriage, 52 years. I mean, that's a lot of rotations around the sun. That's a lot of negotiating and understanding, seeking to understand rather than be understood. It's a lot of putting your ego aside and trying to understand your partner. A lot of work to hit that milestone. It's a miracle in my view to share a life with somebody for 52 years. So I just wanted to say happy anniversary. Have a wonderful day.